Okay, I think we're good to go ahead and start this evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to our second digital parent meeting. Uh, this is a chance for us to kind of talk about a new program here at Bergman. Um, we've been on this piece of property for a long, long time. If I look back in history, I see that in about 1929, our district consolidated with several other little schools in the area, and school's been going on on this piece of property for a long time. This coming up year, though, we're going to try something different. We're going to do something called blended learning, and we're going to do something called digital learning. And you're here this evening because you wanted to know more about digital learning. Traditionally, when kids were not comfortable being on campus or their parents were not comfortable with them being on campus, they just said, hey, you know, we, we don't want to do this. We don't want to do the public school thing. We're just going to homeschool. And they kind of disassociated themselves from the public schools. Well, the State Department has allowed something different to happen this year. They've allowed us to pick a digital format or formats for our three different buildings and blend those into a program that's going to work for K-12 kids. This evening, Amy Curtis, our high school principal, is going to walk us through a presentation that, that's going to tell you a lot of information, I hope. It's going to answer a lot of questions. When she gets finished, we're going to take questions because I know you probably have some. And it's okay if some of them don't have anything to do with digital learning if you just want to know, hey, what's school going to look like? So, Amy Curtis, come and talk to us.
through the courses, you have the opportunity to click to see the study guides. There's extra practice available, so the math teacher me really loves that. And it's very interactive. So at the bottom of your screen, you can see the different angles and rays and bisectors, and you can match those up. It's a drag and drop feature. So it's not just staring at this lesson, trying to interpret it for yourself. You get to move through and, and maintain that interactive piece. Berger Middle School has chosen Lincoln Learning. This is new for the state of Arkansas. Um, we have, there have been a few area schools that have chosen it, and it syncs up with our Arkansas curriculum that we have. It is um, interactive. It does not read to the students. I've been told to keep clicking. <laughs> Sorry. It's self-paced, which all, Apex is self-paced as well. Um, so if you need to to go to a doctor's appointment or something, you can have that opportunity during the day to do so. Easy to use, it's adapted to the Arkansas curriculum, and the objectives are clearly posted, much like Apex. So here's some screenshots. Teach it, read it, watch it, show it, ask, and then practice. Thank you for putting those in, Ms. Harris. Berman Elementary has chosen Google Classroom as their platform. I'm going to turn over the mic to Ms. Atkinson, the elementary principal. Okay, in elementary, we are going to use Google Classroom. Um, you will be taught if you do the virtual, you will come on campus and you will be shown how to log on to it. Like she said, you're going to be given a Chromebook and internet if you need it. Um, the lessons are going to be uploaded from the classroom teachers. So, like, your child will still be in Mrs. Russ's classroom, but their work will be virtual, and it will be all the first grade work um, that the teachers put on for you to do. So, if you decide at some point you want your child to come back to school, then you will be able to come right back, go back into Mrs. Russ's room, and Everything as far as students have been doing will be the same thing that your child has been doing at home. So that the transition will be easier for the student to come back to school. Um, kindergarten and first grade, they really, really should be at school because they do not have that foundation yet. They have not learned to read. They do not have all those basics that they need. That I understand that sometimes we feel they need to, we need to keep them home. So kindergarten and first grade will require a lot of your help because they can't sit down and do the work like the high school or middle school or even my third and fourth graders to do. They need help. So the lessons will be there, but kindergarten and first grade will require a lot of assistance. So that they can get that foundation. That's really a scary thing is that they learn so much. If you've ever had a kindergartner or a first grader, you know how much they learn in those first two years of school. So um, just know that they will require assistance. But everything that they will be doing is what comes from the classroom. Um, daily lessons. We are going to put five days worth of lessons on there Monday through Friday. You can work on those. If you want to work on them all one night, you want to work on them every night, you want to wait till Saturday and sit down and, and whatever fits your schedule, Ms. Harris is going to check for us on Monday, the following Monday, and they will be given credit for attendance if they have done the work. So it doesn't matter that they do Monday's work, Monday, Tuesday's work, Tuesday. As long as that week's worth of work is completed, then they get five days' worth of attendance counted. If she gets on Monday and the work is, there's no work done, she's going to reach out to you, she's going to let me know. So, Billy hasn't done any of his work for last week, so that way we can be in touch and say, what do you need from us? How can we help you? You know, we don't want Billy to get behind, so what do we need to do? So she's going to be our, the person first that will reach out to you for that. 
I think they're going to introduce her in a minute, so getting ahead of myself. To kind of piggyback on what Ms. Atkins had said about the pacing for your learning, it is self-paced. Um, I had mentioned earlier, and she had as well, that if you have an appointment or if you have specific days you'd like for those to be your, you know, your learning, your educational days, then that, that helps you move through. Ms. Harris will be, especially for high school students, she'll be in contact with every high school student and once a week, parents as well. Just to make sure you're on track, to see how everybody's pacing and moving through, um, moving through their lessons, making sure that they're on track. So this next section of the presentation, we had uh, some questions that we brainstormed that we thought parents might want to know. So they're they're offered in a Q and A type session. So when can I switch modes of learning? So tonight we say yes, we're going to be digital learners. Students in middle school and high school are strongly encouraged to finish the nine weeks before they enter back into the school. But we know sometimes we have extenuating circumstances that your, uh, your job may have changed and you need those students to come back. Just contact your building principal and we'll get that worked out. The main thing, especially for high school and middle school, is that if your student has been behind in their lessons online, and then they need to come to school, there's still that gap of things that they need to complete. So it's very important that we check those benchmarks that everybody's working um, at their appropriate pace. Elementary, Ms. Atkinson said, can come back at any time because they will be very synchronous with the teachers. Security and safety features are Chromebooks. We use a program called Go Guardian. Our tech guys help us manage that. Um, the school Wi-Fi, if you need the school Wi-Fi, they also have um, safety fi filters, additional filters in those Wi-Fi through T-Mobile. Is it my phone or just? No, hotspots. That's the word. So they have additional filters through hotspots. Do I have to come to school? You, do, you will not have to come to school every day, absolutely not, but we do need you here at school to take some screeners and some assessment tests. So we do a STAR screener three times a year. We've had students at Berman, you understand, you've probably heard them talk about their reading level or their math level. The STAR screener is given three times a year, K-12. The ACT Aspire Summative is given in April for grades three through 10. The ACT is in February. It's given to all juniors in the state of Arkansas. The civics exam this year will be for 11th and 12th graders. That's when we were supposed to take it last year. They were not able to take it. So if you have a senior, that is a graduation requirement before we can hand you a diploma that they have that civics exam. And then course exams as needed. So we put that in there because sometimes when you're taking a chapter test or a unit test, a big summary test, we need you to come in and sit with Ms. Harris and make sure that you're on track and ready to take that exam to pass that for that course. Where do you go when you come on campus? So, Ms. Harris, who's down here, give away. This is Joanne Harris, she's a Berkman graduate, 97, and she is our K-12 digital um, VA coordinator. Um, if you can go in Old Main, and it's across the auditorium in the old boardroom, we've converted it into her classroom. Her email is jharris at Bergman. Are you still a Bergman student? Yes, you are. We want to keep all of our Bergman students. Virtual students are not home, considered homeschool students, so you're still counted in our numbers and all the, the things that make you a Berkman student. If you need help, Ms. Harris will help you. She will, like I said earlier, she will have weekly contact with all students and parents. Apex students. So I had some, some parents ask, if I get stuck in a geometry or an algebra two course or a physical science course or seventh grade science, 
what what can we do? So we will have our our teachers will be able to help your students with those questions. If you're stuck, you'll contact Ms. Harris, and then she will get you in contact with one of our classroom teachers. So your students can get some extra tutoring and then some answers to their questions. Will there be AMI packets? No. This is not an AMI paper packet situation. That was a band-aid that we needed for a very quick fix last year, a very unexpected quick fix last year. So this is a completely digital program that we are offering. We are not doing anything paper pencil. Attendance, because you won't be coming physically on campus, you will be kind of present if you have completed your assignments in a timely manner. Attendance will be taken on Monday based on the previous week's assignments. Your next steps, call your building principal or tonight after the meeting you can come down and socially distance and talk to Ms. Harris about signing up for our digital program. We will need to know by August 10th, that's next week, middle of next week, and then Ms. Harris will create an appointment for you to come up with your student to make sure that you have uh, a device, internet if needed, and so that you can log into all of the platforms, you have the passwords that you will feel comfortable helping your student at home with all of these. Ms. Harris? Do you have anything to say? No. Okay. Mr. Pinks, do you have anything? No. There were a few high school volleyball players out in the parking lot when I came up. They were practicing here. I'm sorry, I'm going to get it off the phone. And I said, okay, what's your burning question? And they said, are we going to have to wear a mask all day? I said, that's, that's a burning question for a whole lot of people. About two weeks ago, the governor issued an executive order that requested that everyone who is 10 years of age or older wear a mask when you can't socially distance. So what that means for our kids that are 10 years old and older, and we're including all fourth graders in that, because we don't want to have to segregate that you're going to have to wear a mask when you can't stay six feet away from people. Yeah. Now, we're going to try to get our class sizes balanced and as, as small as we can. Ms. Curtis and Mr. Keys and, and Ms. Atkinson have been working very hard to turn spaces that we don't normally have classes in, like out here in the lobby. They're going to turn it into a classroom so we can spread this out. We've created, we've probably more than doubled the amount of lunch periods that we're going to have so we can spread kids out and we can put them all on one side of the table so have them all facing the same direction. As many times as we can get kids situations where they don't have to wear their masks, we're going to do it. But we're not a huge school, and there are going to be some times when we can't do that. But every chance we can, we're going to. The school bus is not really one of those places where you can socially distance there. So even though the directive is only for 10 years of age and older, I personally am highly recommending, not requiring, but highly recommending that the little kids wear a mask on the bus too, but not required. This is better than what we did in the spring. Is there anybody that thinks that's not true? This, this is better than what we did in the spring. But it's not as good as we can do for your kid on this campus. All three buildings, all three buildings are filled with 
talented teachers that you can trust, who are committed to your kids, and who care about your kids. And, and we can make this work. We can make this work. And, and it's going to be better than it was in the spring. And as time goes by, we're going to tweak it and get it better and better and better. But I'm just going to flat out tell you, it's not as good as we can do for your kids if they're here on our campus. I've had the chance to be around here a long time. Maybe not as long as 1929, but a long time. <laughs> and Berkman has a great tradition of turning out some amazing graduates. A lot of them are here with me tonight. We can do great things for your kids. Now, is this going to be great, the first ride out of the box? Probably not. But we're going to do the best we can with this. And if you'll work with us, we're going to put out as the best education that we can for your kids. Does anybody have any questions I'm not here to answer? Yes, sir. How close will the virtual learning be to the uh, classwork that the kids do in, in class? Meaning, week one, how is, is my student going to be like, my kid going to be learning what the kids are learning in class? Or is it still more fluid than that? That's a good question. Okay. For elementary, it's going to be right on track because the elementary teachers are going to load it as they do it. For 5 through 12, the teacher, the classroom teacher said to math teacher, it's going to be handed a list of Arkansas standards. And they're going to say, we do this one, this one, this one, this one, that one, this one, this one, in this order, in my classroom. So that's how we're going to be able to load them in Apex. So it's, it's going to be pretty close. Now, is it going to be exactly on? Maybe not. But pretty close. Yes. 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 When uh, when programs were applying to be approved through this program, one of the things that they had to be able to prove was that they covered the Arkansas State standards and that they were pretty much in line with our curriculums. Great question. Yes. Continue 
putting the lessons for all the virtual students and then our blended learners that are now at home will do the same, it'll be the same things. In middle school, um, last year we, we tried really hard to do everything in Google Classroom or at least post things. So one thing that I don't know that has been said yet, but what we did at the end of last year, the paper packets, those are no more. We are trying to go everything digital. We will help you with internet. Middle school, the teachers, what they do in the classroom, they will also put on their Google Classroom as well. So they can pick up that and go with that um, through Google Classroom. They will be used to that. The teacher will be used to posting things. They'll know where to go, how to get there, and what to do from there. But it will be Google Classroom if that happens. Anyone else?
The question was, do we know right now how many people have chosen visual learning? Can I give you two? I give you two as of 5 o'clock this afternoon. As of 5 o'clock this afternoon. 100%. 92 out of 1,053. So the, the majority of kids are still going to try to come face to face. Yes. I, uh, I know my son's going to be really concerned about this. Is he still going to be able to come to school dances? Something along those lines. If, if something like that even exists. So, um, the, the, the middle school joke is you dance like 12 feet apart anyway and do this. Um, that is something right now that I just don't see possible. Uh, with all the requirements um, to, to do that. It, it's a shame. I don't dance, but I have a blast though. And, uh, but um, that's something right now that we just don't see possible. Um, and I'd like to say something as far as middle school and part of high school. Uh, band and choir are looking at different programs that you can do online, that you can play your instrument in front of your computer and it will record you and tell you where you missed and stuff like that and different singing thing. Um, so they are looking at online programs as well. In middle school, every middle school teacher will have a Google Classroom page where that, if they're enrolled, they can go into there, get assignments from there um, and stuff. I don't know a whole lot about the band and choir program. Um, we looked at it a little bit with Mr. Hardman yesterday, the day before, but they're looking at a program where you can play into it, it will play you a, a line, and then you go play it back to them, and it will tell you where you missed, and stuff like that. It's something similar to that, so in middle school that will happen, as well as high school, because they, they do go. Anything else? I'm sorry. Water fountains and restrooms, good question. Uh, we are going to uh, do our best. Uh, like we have said, masks will be required where you cannot social distance. Uh, things are changing constantly. Uh, what I tell you tonight may change by 8 o'clock in the morning. By the time we get ready for school, we will have uh, hopefully some more information about stuff like that. That's the best answer I've got. Let me say. Uh, water bottles, water bottle filling stations. That's what I say. You're okay. Uh, all kinds of cleaning supplies. The misters that you see on television. We're planning on misting the classrooms in the evenings and have those clean and disinfected when the kids come in the morning. Uh, we're planning on doing some cleaning during the day in our classrooms. Uh, paying really close attention to restrooms and water fountains. Those are what we call high touch areas, uh, doorknobs. They're clean those often. And just try to space out as best as we can. Uh, girls like to go to the bathroom and attack, and we're going to have to cut down on that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, there is a, a water bottle filling session here that you can look at if you'd like to see one of those, what that looks like. And we bought elementary, every building has two. Every building has two. And one in the gym, and elementary has lots of water bottles for their kids. Yes. So every kid will be provided one, or can they bring their own? I would say they can bring their own, couldn't they? They can. We bought Berkman Elementary ones, they're blue, and you know, they're got the pants that fall on them, and so. That's but the same thing, I'll learn with school lunches that they would still be able to bring their own lunch. Oh, yes. Students will still be allowed to bring their own lunches. Now, they have uh, access to remove the microwaves from the cafeterias because they told us if we kept the microwaves in the cafeteria that we would have to have someone over there on the side that cleaned it every time somebody used it 
and we just don't have the manpower to do that. Yes. They do. Um, right now, you want, you want this? <laughs> like she says, it could change in the morning. <laughs> the Arkansas Department of Health and the, and the Department of Education are arguing right now about recess. Uh, the Department of Ed understands how important recess is for kids to run and play and walk and get a lot of that energy out and, and be able to socialize and work out problems and carry on. I got four boys, I understand. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, the Department of Health is uh, very focused on our regular track. So, but more to come on recess. I know that, that Debbie has worked to make schedules where we have fewer kids on a playground at a time. But I don't think there's a plan to put dot six to the right on the playground. I think we're just going to encourage, we're, we're, we're going to, you know, uh, Debbie has, is it turkey houses? Yeah. <laughs> Debbie's family has turkey houses. And the, the kind of her at this fall, she sent me a picture. They're real cute. <laughs> and, but they're not very smart. And they bunch up together. And you just kind of have to walk through. I, I imagine teachers have to walk through a lot. But they don't stand still very much on the playground, you know. I mean, so they're running and playing, and that's what we hope we have is running and playing. But like she said, if, if they're, I even thought about it, if they want to go sit down, we will have places that are, you know, where they're not just sitting all at the picnic table together. If they, they get in trouble if they come in contact with That's not my, you know. <laughs> I just want to prepare my food. <laughs> No, I want them to, I'm hoping that at recess they can play and run. Um, if they, like she said, we'll just keep them from getting, you know, too congregated. And a lot of times they get hot and they want to go sit down. So we'll try to keep them separated if they decide to go sit down where they're not just all sitting on top of each other. And yes, sir. Great question. So he said if, if, if they come to school and they're in class and one student contracts the virus, does the whole class have to go home? Each district is responsible for uh, naming a person called a point of contact. And that person is going to be responsible for when they're notified by parents or sometimes they'll be notified by a high school kid. Some, High school kids will, will notify and say, hey, I'm positive, or hey, my kid's positive. We go back and we look at seating charts, and we can tell, okay, who was within six feet for more than 15 minutes in the last 24 hours. Those people are probably the people that would have to quarantine, that the people who are not in that wheelhouse would not. Okay, I got one more question. Yes, sir. Uh, Yes. Debbie, come in here and show him how to do this math problem. 
and you're right there with your teacher. Whether you're on camera or just on the phone, and watching her do the exam. It'll be, it's not perfect, but you are right there with your teacher. Spelling, you know, for little kids, if you have issues. You're still right there with your teacher. Yes.
Yes. We really need to know about the 10. 
Because and the reason that we need to know is because we're trying to. If, if all of you decide, hey, we want to go digital, then we don't need to make you a class schedule for being here so we can get our class numbers down small. And if you've already told me, like, Amanda, I've already got Cooper on the list, so he's already on Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, thank you, thank you for asking your questions in a calm way. I can talk to calm people all day long. Thank you for being calm. Thank you for being polite. I'll let you come down and, and meet with Ms. Harris if you'd like to. If anybody else has got a question for one of the principals. This is Missy Campos, who's our district testing coordinator. Larry and Andrews Tim, our tech guys, are very valuable to us. This is Don Hands and Dolphin Smith. This is Brittany Keats up here on the top. She's the middle school media specialist. They're part of my great team. Thank you for coming to see me.